Elohim dwells in the tabernacle, but also after that, uh, uh, King Solomon, he uh, made a temple. And uh, we could find that in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 5, 13, 14, and chapter 6, verse 1. The tabernacle and the temple uh, were a prophetic shadow of the Messiah, both appointed to Yeshua, the Messiah, whom is Elohim himself dwelling among us and with us, with, with us. The scripture says that the world uh, become flesh. In John chapter 1, uh, verse 14, uh, the, the word become flesh means that uh, Elohim himself, he tabernacle uh, among us, us. In Exodus uh, chapter 25, he says, Elohim says, I will dwell among them. The word among them, among, uh, in English, uh, it's among, it's uh, with us, but in Hebrew, uh, that word with us uh, means also he will live within us, in our heart. And, and when, when we, we, that prophecy uh, uh, was fulfilled, this prophecy was fulfilled when Elohim put out His Holy Spirit in, uh, in the second of, uh, in the chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Then the, the people, uh, the disciple, the apostle, and many other persons were in the house, the temple. They were there praying in one uh, spirit, in one mind, with everyone was, uh, was, they were together. And then suddenly, in the time of Shavuot, in Pentecost, Elohim, and put out His Holy Spirit. That, that what is the Holy Spirit means that Elohim Himself, in a, 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 who is Yeshua, He came uh, in Spirit, dwell uh, in the people. The fact that Elohim dwells amongst us, with us, uh, within us, is an act of grace. Grace, we say that is a merit uh, uh, favor. We don't deserve his favor. The Torah and the prophet speak, spoke about grace more, many times uh, more than the New Testament. What is the Brit Hadashah? Because usually we think that grace appears in uh, uh, when Yeshua came, when Yeshua came, but it's not so. All the Bible is about grace, and there is more grace in the in in the Torah and in the prophets than in the New Testament. So, in the part two, we are going to discover that the grace is present everywhere in the tabernacle. So, with that, we have a question. Should the tabernacle, uh, uh, should the tabernacle be relevant to us today? Many persons, believers in Yeshua, they say that uh, 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 the tabernacle uh, doesn't matter today. It was only important for that time. Uh, in Yeshua time, people made the connection between the tabernacle and the temple, but today is not uh, important. We is not uh, more applicable. It's uh, obsolete. Even they took uh, when uh, they took uh, Hebrew, the book of Hebrew, chapter eight, five, six, uh, to argue, to to discuss, to 
to debate and they say they, they say you see in Hebrew 8 verse uh, 5 6 says says that that uh, the first tabernacle was only a shadow of the second tabernacle who is Yeshua so they say you see was only a shadow that's been it as it is not so important uh, and uh, after that they, they use uh, uh, the, uh, Hebrew chapter 9 verse 11 and in chapter 9 verse 11 says that the more perfect tabernacle was, is the second is Yeshua and Yeshua uh, is the one who represents and he, he is the high priest uh, who serves and uh, in the in the heaven because in the heaven there is a, a tabernacle so the what what uh, they learn or what they see uh, in the scripture is is uh, it's uh, that that is not important anymore we could we we don't need to study we don't need to inquire about the the first tabernacle because it's, it's obsolete. But this, this, is, this problem, why they have this kind of uh, uh, mindset, how they could uh, think like that, is because they are, con uh, they are more, more focused in the New Testament, uh, the Brit Halacha, than the Old Testament, than the Torah, than the prophets. And we, there is a little problem there because when we read only one part, only one chapter, only a few books that we like it, we are going to miss the target. The word of Elohim is, is all the Bible. To understand the mind, uh, to understand the purpose, uh, of Elohim, we need to read the Torah. Torah is the is the heart is the heart of all the Scripture. The prophet prophesy. The prophet uh, call the people, tell the people to come back to the, to the Torah. If they de, de, do not obey and come back to the Torah, then they will get a, a, a judgment from Elohim and the Torah is the, the is very important is is the heart because uh, the Torah announced the Messiah Yeshua so we cannot miss we need to read all the scripture and uh, those those believer uh, they don't inquire they, uh, and they don't uh, read what is written in the Torah about the first tabernacle. And they, why? Because they don't give enough relevance. So, the tabernacle is very important to understand the second tabernacle. If we don't uh, pay attention if we don't read how we are going to understand the second tabernacle Yeshua because the first one is a shadow a point to Yeshua in the book of John chapter 1 14 says the world become flesh if we don't understand exactly the first one uh, the first tabernacle in the desert which is the child of Yeshua how we are going to understand Yeshua ignoring the first tabernacle we miss the target what is the target? Yeshua, the New Testament for example uh, if we miss the New, uh, the New Testament, Yeshua, we are going to uh, misunderstand uh, many words, many, many uh, 
uh, terms, many concepts that we use uh, normally in our life, for example, grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it, the scripture says, For it is by grace you have been saved through, through faith. But if we did not know the, the first tabernacle, we are going to have a wrong idea of, of this verse. Because we are going to get, or we are going to take the grace as a, a something light, a, a kind of grace that allow to do anything. How come? Because anyway, by grace, we are safe already. Keeping this mindset, it is an opposition or contradiction to Elohim's Torah. Why? Because in Hebrews chapter 9, 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is not forgiveness. That was the ritual ceremony. People must bring their, their innocent offering. It does mean that Elohim didn't, did, did not take away the judgment for the sins. He put out his grace to and provide an innocent lamb to die instead to the sinner. There is redemption. So when we understand that Elohim made grace to the sinner, to the people, and then provide a lamb, and we must to bring the a innocent to pay for us and to pour out his blood, we are going to understand the, the verse in uh, Hebrew 9.22. Then we are going to understand that in Hebrew what is written is, by grace we uh, you have been redeemed. And you have been redeemed uh, through faith. By grace you have been redeemed through faith. And faith in Hebrew is emunah. Later we are going to explain what is emunah. And what is redemption? Uh, because by grace we were redeemed. Redemption is to buy again. To pay for what uh, was yours. You have something, and it's yours, but for any reason you, you lose what you, you have a house, and after the bank, uh, uh, come and take your house, because you don't pay the taxes. Then you must to pay again for, for, the, for the house. The idea is that you must to pay again what was yours. To, uh, redemption is to rescue someone else, offering your own life. In Exodus 13, 13, 13, chapter 13, 13 says, redeem the firstborn donkey. If you don't redeem the firstborn donkey, you break his make. So, means, must to die, must to die the poor donkey. So, and in Oseas, Osea chapter 8 9 says, we are going to read to understand what's, what is redemption. Uh, in Osea it says that, that Ephraim went to uh, all the, to the other nation and uh, like a donkey, a wild donkey, went to the other nation to, prosti to get prostitutes, to, 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 to do evil things, to do as the other nation do, to commit sins. 
So the scripture compare the house of, of uh, Israel because Ephraim is, also, is uh, the, the one who get the, the firstborn, the right of the firstborn. And he, when we speak about Ephraim, is the same uh, that when we speak about uh, the house of Israel. So, so the scripture says, compare uh, the house of Israel to, the, uh, to Ephraim. And he says that he is like a donkey, wild donkey. And when we go to Psalms 49, verse 7 and 8, says, No one could redeem the life of, of another, or pay to Elohim a ransom for him. For the life of, of a, a human is costly. A, a, any payment it, it ever, will not be ever enough. So because we cannot pay, this is the message of the tabernacle. Because no one could pay, because to redeem our life is very costly and there is no, no payment, that's why Elohim, he offered to redeem us, to redeem the donkey by Alam. You are going to understand now when we go to Matthew 21, uh, verse 5, 6. When Yeshua come, okay, we are going to read Matthew 21, 6, 25, uh, verse 5, we could start. Say to Daughter, daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and reading on a donkey, and on a call the fall of a donkey. So, what, whatever you see in the scripture, any letter, any sentences, is about is announcing the Messiah, the Messiah. In the past, I was wondering why he need to use a donkey, but the same scriptures show us, tell us the the, the response, the answer. He used. He was the one who will redeem the house of Israel. He was the one, Yeshua, He is the Lamb, and He was uh, telling us that we, comparing us a wild donkey, He, he, he ride the donkey, and uh, He will pay for us, He will redeem us. Many times we, we have a mi misunderstanding between salvation grace and redemption. That's why it's very important to, to know, to read, to study the first tabernacle. Because if we don't know exactly what it uh, uh, means, we are going, going not to understand what is salvation, grace and redemption. We know that in the, in the tabernacle time, uh, 2,500 years ago, Elohim, he had a, 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 a pattern to, to forgive, to, for, to justify, to justify the Israelites with the purpose to be with them. What was the, the, the pattern? To understand that, we going we could go to Romans chapter six thirteen. For the salary for the salary of sin is death, but the gift of gift of Elohim is everlasting life. So in the scripture, Elohim used all the time the same pattern. He starts he starts with grace. Redemption and salvation. 
In the time, uh, 3,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago, Elohim saw the misery, the affliction of Israel in Egypt. They were a slave. They suffer a lot. They don't have hope. But Elohim look at them and he decided to, to come to rescue them. And what he did, uh, he redeemed us. Uh, he redeemed them. How? He offered the lamb, the Passover lamb. And they celebrate Passover and the blood of the, that lamb of Passover uh, uh, redeemed them. After that, Elohim brought them to the wilderness. Then, uh, why to the wilderness, uh, to the desert? To, uh, to bring them to a safety place. When they were in a safety place, what, uh, what is the next, uh, next uh, state, uh, step? Is the Elohim gave them the scripture. Elohim gave them, uh, gave them the Torah, the written Torah. He gave them the, the, uh, the two tablet stone, the Ten Commandments. So, when you get out from the place that is suffering, death, darkness, when Elohim uh, take out, uh, bring you uh, far from there, then you are, he brings you, uh, there is salvation. He saves you from darkness. And, and after that, he gives you his word. Why? Because his word is the, is, uh, uh, the only way to remain in, in, uh, in safe in this salvation is with his word. He put out his grace, he redeems us, and he gave us his commandment. In Psalms 149, 45 says, I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought uh, uh, out your precept. In John uh, chapter 8, 32 says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What is the truth? Yeshua. He is the one who set us free. And Yeshua says, uh, says, look at the Torah. Look, the Torah is the truth that will set you free. So, we cannot be, uh, we cannot be safe if we are, uh, we are not uh, uh, redeemed. First, we need grace after redemption and after salvation. And it the same is the same for us. It happened to the to the Israelites in the uh, wilderness. Uh, but with us, we before to come to Yeshua, we were deaf in our sins and transgression. His grace, we uh, come to us. He put out His grace, and the Scripture says that we, I, in the past, I deserve death, but I didn't deserve His favor. But He decided to change my destiny, and He, because He died for me, He redeemed my life and now in response to what he did grace and he did also the um, uh, he redeemed my life what I will do is normally he gave me his Torah his word and the only way to keep me safe in in that say in the safety place in the road of salvation is keeping his Torah. We are not going to be safe nowhere. The only place to be safe 
and how salvation is in the rock of our salvation, Yeshua. But to keep, to remain there and uh, stay in the path of salvation, we need to obey his commandment. I'm sorry, but I feel like uh, <laughs> difficult to. I don't know why, but I feel that uh, a lot of opposition this week uh, uh, about the, the message, not about things around, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah? And so what happened that, uh, is very important, I said, first point to understand the tabernacle, because uh, we need to understand the word. Uh, the, the, the concept grace, redeem, and salvation but also is very important the tabernacle because because uh, for Elohim the tabernacle is very important if for him is very important and not for us there is a little problem if for us is, is uh, very important and for him is not important, there is a problem but what we could read in the scriptures, Elohim, eh, 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 for him is very important. We are going to see here. When Elohim repeats something, it's because it's important. That's it. Very clear. Yeah. Brother John, he when he he all the all the time he read the the, 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 the scripture, the, the Torah, but once he said, oh, wait a minute, two books all repeat the same, must be important, so I must pay attention. This, this is the fact, it, it, when Elohim repeats, it's because must be very important. So, many times we read in the scriptures, uh, for example, in John 5.24, Yeshua says, very truly, or truly, truly, I tell you, he repeats, it is to emphasize of what he's, he's telling us. Every Shabbat in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 4, uh, we, we, repeat, we read, Hear, O Israel, Elohim our God is one. And this word that I speak to you today will be in your heart. You must teach to diligently to your children. When you wake up, when you are on the way, when you raise, when you lie down, you must write. What is doing there? Repeating. Why? Must be important. It makes sense. He repeats because it's very important. And now we say Torah, his commandment. Is is not uh, it's uh, it's not important now. He knew already that three thousand five hundred years later we are going to fall down or we are going to uh, m uh, fall down or uh, we are going to misunderstand him. And uh, what about the tabernacle? When we look on the Torah, we see that Elohim was very severe. He was very serious concerning the tabernacle. Many times, as we, as believers, we are wondering, why, how come the Bible gave us such importance uh, to this topic, the tabernacle, and put a lot of emphasis uh, relating carefully all the details of the tabernacle. Uh, uh, when, when for us or for many persons uh, it should be apparently of uh, secondary importance. There is something more important than the, the, than the tabernacle for many persons, but not for Elohim. Uh, for, uh, when, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, Elohim, when he described 
the origin of the creation when when he describes how the heavens and the earth were created he take one chapter when we see in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 uh, uh, it says uh, in the beginning elohim creates the heaven and the earth and the earth was uh, void and empty and he used 31 verses to explain all the uh, the creation 31 verses but but it's not enough for for uh, we could say maybe we could believe and uh, think that is not enough uh, why why uh, Elohim he did not consider uh, that it's necessary to to give us more explanation clarification or uh, regarding the origin of uh, of uh, of the creation he gave just little little uh, verses uh, uh, around uh, throughout the scriptures for example uh, in psalms 19 1 says the heavens declares the glory of elohim and the skies proclaim the work of his hands oh so in my sight oh this is about his mighty this is about his beauty he is uh, this is about his power he must to introduce himself like that uh, like the like the only one so it's more important that he take many many chapters or many books describing anything how much power he applied to do this to do that but for Elohim one chapter is okay but but uh, in uh, but uh, comparing to the tabernacle for Elohim is so important uh, that he used not one chapter he used almost 50 chapters that speak about the tabernacle and if uh, and, and also uh, uh, he he come back with the uh, the topic of tabernacle in the book of hebrew uh, uh, chap since chapter 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, 9 while in the chapter 5 he's uh, speaking about the priest the high priest yeshua is the high priest the one who came once for all and came not in the uh, in the first tabernacle but he came to the heaven to present us but it's about tabernacle and, uh, and here i have a list uh, the, of uh, of uh, uh, verses chapter that uh, that speak about the tabernacle, uh, the frames Exodus 26, covering Exodus 25, the second cover, curtains, curtains, but you will see that it's Exodus, uh, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, and there is a many list, also Joshua, uh, second Chronicles, and Revelation. So, if he take a lot of pages, a lot of chapters to describe and speak to about the tabernacle is because it's very important. So, the tabernacle, the, the first tabernacle, must be important to understand and to know it. Even if it's not anymore there, even the temple is not anymore there, but what is the meaning and what is the purpose we need to inquire of that? to better understand the second tabernacle, Yeshua, and what's going to happen with him for the eternity. So Elohim, uh, we, are, we arrive to the offerings for the tabernacle. Elohim uh, tell in uh, Exodus 20, uh, chapter 25 verse 8 Elohim says, says have them make a sanctuary and I will dwell among them and, uh, and in Exodus 25 1 verse 1 says 
tell the Israelite to bring me an offering. Uh, the purpose of the offering, as I said before, was to make the tabernacle. So Elohim requirements was that everyone, whoever, everyone whose heart was uh, prompt uh, to give, the, uh, everyone whose heart prompt them to give, bring the offering. He didn't uh, 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 force no one, but he says only those, whoever, whoever. And what is uh, what is what it mean is to be generous. Elohim, he is uh, generous. He is good. He is uh, uh, he is he loves us, and so he wants that we become like him, we become generous also to give to others. Uh, he wants that for, uh, our heart must to be willing to give. Uh, we don't must to, uh, we must to have this uh, advice from Elohim uh, and not to be as Second Corinthians says, uh, chapter 9 and 6. Remember this, whoever so sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever uh, so abundantly will uh, reap abundantly. So Elohim says, the one who is generous, come and bring your, your offering. Why? Because he wants to bless everyone who come with our offering. If you don't reap, if you don't uh, give, you will uh, not get abundantly. You will get very few. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the other things that never uh, Elohim will ask you something that you don't have. Uh, Elohim says, uh, uh, ask them to bring the uh, offering according of what they have. So, the invitation is for everyone. In Exodus 12, verse 35, 36. Some people, they brought gold, silver, bronze, other offered uh, their uh, own skills. They were good to work with the with the fabric, uh, they were with the, the material. Other uh, offer the skin of goat, uh, a skin of uh, 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 they brings other things, not only money. Because usually when we says bring your offerings, we think about uh, uh, metals, gold, bronze, uh, silver. But you could offer whatever you have. Some people, they didn't have mm, gold, but they offer other things. They offer blue, they offer uh, uh, purple, they offer uh, other kind of things. So we, as a congregation, as Kehila, we could uh, take this same example. We could bring uh, our offering, giving uh, according to what we possess. If we possess time, let's do it. Uh, we could offer our time. If we have uh, uh, a tithe, uh, we, uh, we offer that. The scripture says that uh, uh, if someone has a song, a song, a message of, uh, of uh, comforting, if uh, someone has a, a prophecy, let's bring what you have. This is the, the people of Elohim. So, to not retain or to not keep for yourself what God himself, he gave you. You offer to him what, uh, a part of uh, what you receive from him. 
many times we, we ask uh, or we are wondering, Elohim needs uh, help, a little help? Elohim needs something from us? He is the creator of the universe. He made the gold, the bronze, the silver. He made the animals. So, did he need my help? Is not he able to do anything? No, the answer is that he don't need me, my offerings. The thing is that, that uh, uh, he don't need my money. And why he says to bring out an offering is because he wants uh, we participate. He, we, he wants that we participate to his, his work. He wants to give us the opportunity and to be involved with him. Uh, uh, and it, it is, he wants to give us the privilege and give us uh, 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 the privilege to work with him. He could do it uh, alone. The scripture says that uh, he, he spoke and everything was created. Why? Because he is uh, the world. World, he is Davar, and Davar. What is Davar? Is that uh, when he speaks, everything, things appears. Davar is things. Davar is the wilderness. Davar is be. Davar is world. So when he opens the mouth and he speaks, everything appears. Things appear. That's why Bible says he called the things that doesn't exist as as like a, a, like a, if uh, that they existed. He said chairs, he, said, he says three, trees, trees, he says rivers. There is no river there, but when he speaks, then he created the rivers. He don't need something from me, but because he is good, he gives me the privilege to participate and work with him. When we could, when we have, we must to give. And uh, why? Because there is a time that we will not be able to give because we are not going to have, or because the time will not allow. Uh, in Exodus 36, uh, verse 5, verse 6 and 7, says that the people brought more than that uh, required, and people brought abundantly. So Elohim says to Moses, stop, tell the Israelites to stop to bring. Oh, if we could have, take this example, if we could be so generous, and when Elohim uh, required something from us and asked something for us, from us, we could be la like a this is right. They brought with joy. They brought a lot uh, more than it's required. So they say, "Oh, we want to bring more, but oh, we are not allowed to bring more." Moses told the people to bring. So when we could, we must to do it because because. Uh, <coughs> we cannot have the opportunity all the time. In this time we live with uh, uh, the, the virus, let's say, with the, the, all the rumors, all the, 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 the earth is shaken, is uh, uh, changed, is the time that we could give. We could, is the time that we cannot uh, uh, cross the arms and and we, we have the opportunity, even in, the, in, in times very difficult, we could uh, give, let's say, maybe we could, we could uh, uh, kneel, we could uh, bow down and pray for our neighbor. It's the time that, that maybe a little bit, but we, Elohim will uh, tell us, will reveal us how we could give an offer to other people 
maybe something that they need. They need encouragement. They need comforting. They need prayers. They need to listen that we have hope in Yeshua. And they need to, to listen the truth that, that the earth is shaking, but Yeshua is holding the earth. Everything is going to shake, but the word of Elohim endures forever, will never pass away. So they need to listen to that. And now the people, let's take this opportunity, because now the people, they, they are wondering, they, are, they, are, they don't know what's going on. So it's the chance for us, it's more easy to come to them and tell them, the opportunity to give an offering to him let's do it a scripture says seek Elohim while he could be found so when we see people that they are uh, they don't know what is going what is happening is the best moment to come and speak to their heart it's not our word it's Yeshua word the Torah, the living Torah, and and we don't know. They not if we speak to ten people, maybe two or three, they will be more sensitive uh, and able to to hear and pay attention. And Elohim, Yeshua, could touch them. So we now we are going to go uh, study the materials. We have four groups. When the Bible speaks about something, in this case, the materials, uh, is because uh, that it, it is uh, required to build the tabernacle. But because all, all, all the Bible speaks has a, a special purpose and has a special meaning. The idea is, what I want to say is that, that there is nothing that Elohim says for nothing. He, when he speaks, if he says glasses, is for a reason. If he says nail, if he says water, is for a reason. It has a purpose and a meaning. So the material in the tabernacle uh, has uh, is are important in Exodus 25 verse 37 we find we see that there is four uh, four gr group of materials and uh, there is a, 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 we find that we have metals and uh, and all the metals are related with Elohim when we see in, uh, the gold the gold shows uh, the divinity of Elohim, his divine nature. The something that uh, came to my mind is that uh, uh, where he is, there is streets of gold. You know why? Because he is a king. So the gold is uh, representing, it's symbolizing Elohim himself. The caravans in gold, it, uh, it means the, 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 the divinity of Elohim, means that what is in the, uh, in the heavens. When the Bible speaks about silver, 
the second uh, method speak, speaks about redemption. When the Bible, uh, the other uh, metal is brass or bronze, uh, brass is God's justice making judgment. When, uh, if we remember when Moses he lift up, lifted up the serpent, the snake, bronze snake in the pole. It's why? Because the people are, are for for uh, ancestor they uh, they sin uh, they sin against uh, Elohim and they speak bad against uh, Moses. So the judgment against the sin make that uh, snakes appears and then Elohim says uh, says. And lift up a, a, a snake on, on a pole. What's a bronze snake? Bronze, brass means uh, judgment. Gold, silver, and bronze. And we see that uh, the Israelites they brought a lot. And that what they are brought was very significant. And, and the amount was uh, was uh, uh, a great fortune and from where they took it we read that they asked to the Egyptian Elohim he granted them to to come out from Egypt, Egypt with uh, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, wealthy a lot of uh, re, uh, wealth, a lot of wealth, and he put favor in the eyes of uh, the Egyptian, and when they asked them, gave us what you have to offer us, the Egyptian, they were uh, able, they were agreed to give them, go, go, take, take, but go, 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 live from us. Uh, after we have the second uh, uh, group is the material with a direct connection with the Messiah. Same Exodus 25 verse 4 5. Uh, then uh, some uh, they brought a blue, and the blue refers to the presence of Elohim. The blue refers to the skies, the heavens. We see the skies is uh, blue, is nice, and. Uh, and in the book of uh, uh, John, the word made flesh. So that means uh, the, uh, the word made flesh, Yeshua, the one who came from the heavens. So the blue refers to the heavens. And then we have also the brass of purple. And uh, purple, it symbolizes or it uh, refers to the royalty. The kings in that time, they, their clothes, cloth, their garment were in purple, the color purple. Uh, and the Roman empires, leaders in the Roman empires, uh, they uh, were uh, purples. And the person, uh, every person who was very rich, they were purple. The religious uh, uh, leaders, not in Israel, but let's say we, we, in the Catholic Church, they were purples. Everywhere in the world, I remember because I went many times when I was, uh, they were purple, they call it purple. So purple means a, a high class, a royal, kings, leaders, a wealthy person. Uh, in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 uh, to, uh, until 31, 